Hey guys, I did a cop watch here in Yukaipa the other night, and um, I'm going to repost portions of it here with commentary because I want to point something out here. Now again, um, just a little preface here. First of all, the Yukaipa Police Station of the San Bernardino County Sheriff's Department here, uh, several of the deputies are really cool. They let me do my thing. They know that I'm a cop watcher. They know that I'm out there recording the police, that I'm filming them, and they just let me do my thing. That's kind of that I do it. Second of all, um, via YouTube and Twitter, uh, I am a independent freelance journalist slash activist for police accountability. I am. I, I have credentials. I had them on that night. I had them around my neck, little badge here, the little white credentials around my neck, uh, th that I am an independent freelance journalist and activist. Um, many, many, many of you who are on YouTube that are cop watchers or First Amendment auditors, Believe it or not, you are independent freelance journalists slash activists. You really are. You fit that category. And under the uh, Constitution of the United States and your state constitution, you have the right to do that. The First Amendment of the U.S. Constitution, in fact. So I was watching back that cop watch that I did the other night, and I just heard some things and I saw some things that I want to point out here in a video and again, this is for police accountability and any law enforcement officers that watch this video here. Maybe you guys also can learn something here. Maybe I'll learn something here as well. So I'm going to play portions of that cop watch right now with added commentary to it. And here we go. He just said he has warrants, but how did they catch this guy just walking up the street or... So now you're going to see uh, he's going to keep walking. So he's standing in front of my camera so that I cannot see the search that's going on with the pedestrian. Uh, there are little tricks to do two things. One, it's trying to keep me from recording the police. I don't know why, what they're trying to hide. And number two, that's exactly what he might be trying to do is hide me from recording his... Um, his partner from doing the search on the pedestrian. If they make a mistake or if they're doing something wrong, my camera won't be able to catch it because he's standing in front of my camera. He's physically trying to block me, an independent journalist and activist, from recording a police search on a pedestrian. That's what he's trying to do. He ran his name, but what was the stop for? That's the question. All right, so at this point, I said, all right, he's standing here. And, you know, when you stand directly behind cops, they get really paranoid. Like, don't stand behind. I don't like you standing behind me or whatever. You know how they do that. So I'm going to walk across this grassy area onto the sidewalk to the end of the sidewalk where the curb is. And I'm going to walk up to the corner where the stop sign is and record the uh, search on the pedestrian while the other police officer who was standing over here, you saw him over there, Watch, he's going to turn and he's going to walk right up to me. Yeah, he walks right up to me. <clears throat> what are you doing? Why are you walking up on me? I'm just recording, officer. Now I'm going to question him why he's walking up to me when I'm just trying to record. Because my fear right now is that he's trying to walk right into me and say, hey, you're interfering with this. Turn around. Let me see your ID or turn around. He's going to try to ID me for interfering, even though I'm just standing there quietly trying to record. Or he's going to try to grab me and arrest me. That's my fear because this guy is a bully with the badge. 
So I'm going to question it, and he's going to say, go away. Go away. If I had KTLA 5 or Eyewitness 7 or CBS 2 News on my microphone, I forget what they call it, uh, not a, a matchbox, right? But if I had that on my microphone or on my camera, I had CBS 2 News, I wonder if he would say go away or if he would just say, oh, we're on the news. But because it's an independent freelancer, well, we can treat them however we want. It's just a guy with a camera. So you're going to hear him say, go away. Okay. And now you're going to see him use his flashlight, turns it on to block me from trying or trying to block me from recording what they're doing. Now he's becoming an intimidator. Now he's becoming an instigator. Uh, you're going to hear me say that's a violation of the Thomas Bain Act. I was being proper. Michael, not Mike. Ronald, not Ron. No, um, it's the Tom Bain Act of California. I'm going to put some of it here for you to read. Uh, but he could technically have violated the Tom Bain Act, which means I could technically, uh, well, anybody can sue in America, but I could technically file a lawsuit against this police department. I'm not going to do that because this is, you know, I would rather make a video and let everybody see what kind of deputy and what kind of bully this guy is. No other deputies do this. I mean, there was one other, there has been a couple others that shine their flashlight at me, but they pretty much let me go after I made a video and they were like, all right, you know, I'm gonna leave this guy alone. Uh, this one, I don't know. He won't let me, he just keeps on and on for some reason, but here you're going to see him use his flashlight to try to intimidate me from recording. You know what the Thomas Bain act is, right? You're violating it. Deputy. Rose just walked up on me, violating my First Amendment constitutional rights. Look at this, guys. All right, guys, this here is the final clip. And right here, I was actually just narrating into the video uh, to describe this deputy and his tactics, what he's been doing so far. I've just been trying to record. It's all I've been trying to do. He's been walking in front of my camera. He walked up to me. He's telling me to go away. Just go away. You know, he's trying to, I mean... Everything he can do, put a flashlight in my camera in my face uh, by pointing it at, on bright. Everything he can do to disrupt me from just recording what the police are doing, which is my constitutional right. So at this point, now I'm going to narrate free speech under, again, the First Amendment and California Constitution, Article 1, Section 2, that the liberty of press and speech... Actually, it says the liberty of speech and press shall not be prohibited. But he's going to say you're violating or not violating. He says, uh, oh, you're disturbing the peace. Hold the noise down is what he's going to say. You can barely hear it, but I'll, I duplicated just that clip. So maybe you can catch it where you'll hear him say you're disturbing the peace. Hold the noise down. See, he's going to try to he's trying to set me up now. For a noise complaint. The only thing he doesn't understand at this point right here, right now, the police cannot be complainants of noise. Noise, which I know because I was an animal control officer at one time, one time, uh, one time, is that noise is a third party complaint. Did you know that? A noise complaint is a third party complaint. That deputy cannot be the complainant. Yeah, you didn't know that, did you? So uh, the only reason I took it in that plea deal was just because I wanted to rub it in his face that he didn't get the resisting, uh, obstructing an officer. He didn't get that charge. Yeah, that was thrown out, rubbed it in his face. But outside of that, he can't get me for noise right now because it's a third party complaint. 
He's not a third party. He's just a deputy doing his job or supposed to be doing his job. He's more worried about me than his partner doing the search on the pedestrian. Last clip. Here you go, guys. Thanks for watching. See, guys, this is the kind of cop he is, a bully. He's a bully. He's a tyrant. Violates people's First Amendment rights. They pro Shut up. They probably stopped this guy for no reason. He was probably just walking up the street and they pulled over and said, let's check this guy out. They psychically knew he had warrants. They said, oh, you know what? That guy's probably got warrants.